Hi third graders, we're going to be doing another recounting stories lesson. And the story that we're going to be recounting today is called True or False. So let's review how we have been recounting stories this week. We learned the strategy called the five finger retail. Remember, when you are reading a story and you're going to recount it or retell the story to somebody, there are five things that you need to include. The first one is the characters and only the main characters in the story. The setting, that can be the time and place that the story is happening, or sometimes it's just the time, or sometimes it's just the place. The problem that the characters run into, and then the events that start occurring after the problem has happened and they need to be retold in the order in which they happen. And we need to use transition words like first, next, after that, finally, in the end, words um, that show the order of the events. And then the last part of the five finger retail is the ending of the story. And sometimes this include, well, all the time it should include the solution to the problem. That means how the, the um, characters fix the problem. And sometimes it can, can include the lesson or the moral of the story um, that, uh, that the characters learned, if the story has a lesson or a moral to it. So this is a strategy I'm gonna want you to use today to do your assignment. And that brings us to our learning target. I can recount, which means to retell a story that includes characters, setting, problem, events in the order in which they happened, and an ending, which should include your solution and a moral, if there, a moral or a lesson, if there is one. So the story that you're going to be recounting for me today is in your Ready Common Core book on pages 114 and 115. The story is called True or False. And this is a folk tale from a part of the world called Burma. It's on the continent of Asia. So it's actually across the world from us. And you know, you can notice the um, different lifestyles um, from different parts of the world just from the illustrations in the picture or the illustrations in the story. If you look at how people are dressed, you can see that there are things that look a little different from how we dress. So we can tell that this is from a different part of the world. And the reason that we're going to recount this story is because I wanna make sure that you can understand the most important parts of a story. Sometimes these folk tales or fables or myths can be a little bit confusing. So you do have to read the stories more than once to truly understand what is happening in the story. So let's look at the title of the story again, true or false. And then let's look at the illustrations here to see if we can learn a little bit about what we think the story could be about. So as I'm looking over on the left-hand side, I see a person sitting kind of crisscross applesauce and it looks like they're on top of a tree. I wonder why they would be on top of a tree. I'm also noticing how they're dressed just in a simple long jacket and some pants. And then at the bottom of this page, I see another person who looks like they might be fighting a tiger. The tiger's fighting back, but this person is, doesn't look scared. It looks like they're fighting the tiger too. And again, I'm noticing how they're dressed, just kind of a plain uh, blue long pants and a long shirt. Also look how their hair um, looks a little bit different than how we would wear our hairstyles today or how men would wear them today. Then on this picture over here, I see three people who look dressed very similarly, um, just kind of some plain clothes. And it looks like they are talking to a person over here who is dressed slightly differently. This person looks like they have some finer clothing. Maybe, um, maybe this person has money or some something, um, sets him off from the other three men in the story. 
So then I think about the title, True or False. Hmm, and I know sometimes we play a game called Truth or Dare. I wonder if this happens to be about a game, maybe, and it has um, a very similar kind of name, and so they're calling it True or False. Hmm, so that is something to think about before you read the story. Okay, I wanted to also bring your attention to something that I talked about during our video meeting the other day uh, called a tall tale. And I know in this story that they talk about a tall tale. And a tall tale is a story that is exaggerated. What that means is they, they tell a story about something that could be true, but they kind of exaggerate it and make it to be something bigger than it really is. And I gave you the example during our video meeting about going fishing. Well, going fishing is, is a real thing. You can do that. But maybe somebody would tell a tall tale about fishing by saying that they caught a, a fish that was so big that it almost sank the boat when they reeled it in. So that's slightly unlikely, but um, that would be an example of a tall tale. Okay, there are three words that are in this story that I want to bring your attention to so that you can make I can make sure that you understand the meaning of the story. And the first one is this word doubt. This is going to be an important word to understand. The word doubt means that you don't believe something. So if somebody's telling you a story and you doubt it's true, then you're thinking, eh, I don't believe that story. I doubt that's true. So a doubt means to not believe something. Then there's another word called servant. And a servant is a person that works for another person. Usually servants aren't paid or if they are paid, they're not paid very much. And this happens um, in, um, you'll hear stories from a long time ago where people had servants. So that is what that word means. So when you see it in the story, you know what it means. And then the last re re word that you might come across that I want to make sure you understand is the word disbelief. Well, at the beginning of this word, we have this prefix called dis, and that means not. And then belief means to believe something. So when you put those together, it means not to believe something. So when you have disbelief, you are not able to believe that something is real. I know sometimes when I see a magic show or a magic trick, I have disbelief. I cannot believe that just happened. How did they make that person disappear? How did they change into clothing, um, a, a whole new set of clothing just by waving a, a sheet across their, their body? That is an example of disbelief for me. So when you see the word disbelief, it means that you're not able to believe that something is real. You just can't believe it. You're in disbelief. Okay, so those are some important um, words to know when you are reading the story. If you come across them, make sure you understand how they are used in the text because that'll help you understand more about the story. Okay, so here's your assignment. So now that you understand a little bit about what the story might be about, here's what you're going to do. You need to do a close reading of this story. Again, it's in your Ready Common Core book, pages 114 and 115. And during that first read, you're just going to read it to see what the story is about. A suggestion would be to stop every couple paragraphs and ask yourself some questions. Try to make sure that you understand what is going on before you read the whole thing and think, oh, I don't know what I just read. Now I've got to go back and read it again because I don't know. So stop every so often and ask yourself um, questions about the text to so, so that you know what's going on in the story. The second time you read it, I want you to look for the information for that five finger retail. You need to make sure that you know who the main characters are, the setting, which is either the time it's happening, like one, one day, a long time ago, one spring, one winter, um, or the, the place it's happening. Like, are they in the forest? Are they in the beach? Are they at the ocean? So look for that evidence from the text. Then you need to make sure you understand what the problem is in this story and the important events that start happening after we decide what the problem is. Make sure you know what the order, the order in which they happened in the story because you're going to have to include that in your retail with some transition words like first, next, then, after that, 
last, at the end. Those are transition words. And then, of course, you need to have an ending. How did the story end, which usually includes the solution. That means how did they solve the problem? And if the characters learned a lesson in the story, like a, a moral of the story. But not every story has one. So if there is one, this is where you would put it in the ending of the story. So after you have read the story a couple times to get all of the information from the five finger retail, you're gonna go into the assignment in Schoology and do the recounting quiz called true or false about this story. Make sure that you only include the important information or details for the five finger retail. This story has a lot of extra information that's not really that important to giving an idea of what the story is about. So only include the important things. And don't forget to use your transition words like first, next, then, finally. And when, uh, when you are recounting those important Okay, so grading. How am I gonna grade it? And how are you gonna know what you need to do? Well, here's what I'm gonna be looking for. I'm gonna make sure that you have an item for each part of the five finger retail, the setting, or sorry, the characters, the setting, the problem, the events, and the ending should all be included in your recount. And I'm looking for only the important information needed to retell the story. So if you have some extra information in there um, and it doesn't need to be in there, then take it out of your retail. But if you're missing something important, then that's gonna miss some of your points. So make sure that the information you're picking is truly um, part of the, the five finger retail, the important information. I'm also going to be looking for those transition words to show the order of the events. So I've mentioned them a couple times. Here, here they are again. First, next, after, then, last, finally, at the end. So those are examples of some. You don't have to use those exact words, but um, those are some you could use. And then I'm going to make sure those events are in the correct order and again, only include the, the important events. Okay, boys and girls, I want you to do your best work. I know you can do this. I know that you um, have been working hard. And so I can't wait to see how we're doing on our recounting. All right, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.